Faith starts to realize there's no room for the first lady of bad boy in daddy's house. This is the infamous daddy's house recording studios. And after losing big, I refused to record here on my Keep the Faith album. I was just kind of like over everything and everybody. To be honest, I wanted to try and leave bad boy after big died. He was such a, a good thing for me because I needed what he had. And so him, his, his, his ambition pushed me to be ambitious. Because word on the curb is that Diddy had a party last night, September 7th, but everybody and mama was on Twitter talking about Mary J. Blige and Faith Evans. They actually had a physical altercation. A lot of people have been wondering when Faith Evans will share her side of the story about Diddy because word on the street is that she went through some messed up situations during her time at Bad Boy. And allegedly, it wasn't just Diddy putting her through it, but also Mary J. Blige. I remember going to Puff's house and just just trying to talk to him, you know, heart to heart and just say, yo, please let me go. Like, that ain't an easy thing, you know, not with him. <laughs> in 1993, Faith Evans moved to LA and started working as a backup singer for Al B. Sure, and it was around this time that Faith caught Diddy's attention. He later invited her to do some background vocals, and after just one session in the studio, Diddy signed her on the spot, making her the first female artist to join his bad boy record label. So when I went in and did these two lines and rearranged them, I asked him, Mr. Puff, you mind if I change it around a little bit? And I did, and I added all my arrangements and harmonies. And when I came out, he asked me, did I want to sign his new label? In 1994, the same year Diddy signed Faith to Bad Boy, Faith met Biggie Smalls at a photo shoot and quickly hit it off. In fact, they got married after knowing each other for just a few weeks. First time we had a conversation, you know, there was something that I felt that was really cool about him. And um, shortly after that, it may have been about a five, six weeks, something like that. And he was like, I'm going to marry you. I'm like, are you serious? He asked me again the next day in less than a week, probably August 4th, 1994. We drove up to Rockland County, upstate New York, to the Justice of the Peace and went in the little room with a clerk and we got married. And I was happy. I was my baby, you know? That same year, Diddy asked Faith to sing back vocals and co-write tracks for Mary J. Blige's second studio album, My Life, and Usher's self-titled debut album. Meanwhile, she also started working on her own self-titled album, which was released in August 1995 and became an instant success thanks to chart-topping singles like You Used to Love Me and Soon As I Get Home. The album was eventually certified platinum, selling 1.5 million copies. The following year, Faith welcomed a son with Biggie, Christopher Wallace Jr. However, by that point, Faith and and Biggie's relationship had already started crumbling amid allegations that he cheated on her with multiple women, including Lil' Kim, and then Faith allegedly took revenge by having an affair with none other than Biggie's rival, Tupac. This move implicated Faith in the East Coast-West Coast, Coast hip-hop war, and it all culminated in two tragedies. On September 7, 1996, Tupac was killed in a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas, and just six months later, on March 9, 1997, Biggie was fatally shot in LA. After this, Faith's whole perception of the music industry and Bad Boy Records changed, and she was desperate to leave Diddy's label. Faith later told the New York Times that Diddy started mistreating her and putting all kinds of crazy demands on her, like forcing her to tan every other day. Puff used to walk me to the tanning salon every other day because I was pale and he wanted to tan me up, Faith said, and he told me he wanted me to walk out of the house and look glamorous all the time. Also, almost immediately after Biggie died, Diddy pressured Faith to perform his track I'll Be Missing You with him and Sting at the 19th 1997 MTV Music Awards, despite the fact she was still grieving. Faith said, when he wanted me to sing I'll Be Missing You at the MTV Awards with Sting, I didn't want to do anything. I was still grieving. But he got me on the phone and was like, listen, you ain't about to F my thing up. I thought my crying would work, but he persuaded me to do it. Around this time, there were also a lot of rumors and speculations that Diddy set Biggie up to be killed because he reportedly ordered him to go to LA, knowing that folks over there were looking to avenge Tupac's death. According to former Bad Boy Records executive, executive Kirk Burrowies. Biggie was supposed to travel to London on the day he was killed. However, Diddy called the night before and said Biggie had stayed in LA. He was supposed to leave that early morning, go to uh, London, and we would be out there for two or three days, and then he would go back to New York and go home. Uh, Diddy called Sean P. Diddy, whatever his name was during that time, called late Friday night early Saturday morning saying he's not going to London. Call Arista, cancel it, you, you go, you represent it, you go. 
He's not going. He wants to stay here in L.A. Biggie's mom, Valletta, also had doubts about Diddy's loyalty, writing in her memoir, I believe Sean loved my son after he was dead. I used to tell Christopher all the time not to trust Sean. And while Valletta didn't directly accuse Diddy of anything, during her 2020 interview on The Breakfast Club, she said she still wants to strangle some of Biggie's former associates. You know, some of the, the, the <laughs> some of his associates, I still want to strangle them. So with all these rumors about Diddy setting up Biggie, Faith was looking for a way out to leave Bad Boy. This is the infamous Daddy's House recording studios. And after losing Big, I refused to record here on my Keep the Faith album. I was just kind of like over everything and everybody. To be honest, I wanted to try and leave Bad Boy after Big died. Even though that makes no sense because I was still in the contract and there's nowhere in there that says you can leave if your husband, you know, passes away. However, she was contractually tied to Diddy, so she went on to release two more albums on his label. And though her second and third albums were well received by critics and fans alike, Faith was struggling a lot because Diddy allegedly completely sidelined her and made no effort to promote her projects. Meanwhile, there were rumors about Faith being terrorized by Mary J. Blige, who was apparently desperate to be the first lady of Bad Boy. Word on the street is that Mary was jealous of Faith's vocal talent, and she even had Faith's vocals removed from some of the songs, including their 1995 collab, Love Don't Live Here Anymore. Had a song together or something? Or? Yeah, on my first album, we okay. did a song together um, called Love Don't Live Here Anymore. Wow. And then at the time, the general manager, Bad Boy, called me like probably about six months after my album came out, like, Mary wants a voice off your album. You need to call her. I was like, no, I don't. I mean, I didn't do nothing to her, so yeah, what am I going to yeah. call her for? I don't know what why, what happened. Right. They didn't tell me what happened, so why are you telling me to call her? So I just re-recorded the record, which I hated without her on it, but you know. But this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the disturbing allegations about Mary's time at Bad Boy. See, according to some industry insiders, Mary wanted to make it so badly that she allegedly allowed Diddy to pimp her out to his artists. Back in the 90s, when Mary was officially dating Casey from Jodeci, the rumor was going wild, linking her not only to Diddy, but also multiple Bad Boy artists and other rap heavyweights like Nas, Case, Danny Boy, Grand Pooba, and even Tupac. And according to some long-standing industry whispers, Diddy was reportedly dangling Mary as a prize for artists signing with him. But that's not all. There was another rumor floating around that Diddy may have gotten Mary pregnant at some point and allegedly pressured her to get an abortion. And if that weren't enough, there's a recent blind item making the rounds suggesting that Diddy's ex, Kim Porter, knew about this and was planning to spill the tea in her tell-all book. Mary J. Blige being pregnant by Diddy, and of course, she had an AB. Now here's where it gets even more wild. Recent rumors making the rounds online suggest that Mary wasn't just a bystander in the whole Diddy Cassie drama, and that she might have actually been in on some of those FO sessions. If you look up photos of Mary from the time Diddy and Cassie were an item, you'll stumble on a bunch of pictures of the three of them together, and in quite a few of these snaps, they're all holding hands like it's some thruple situation. But the plot thickens even more. When Cassie finally made her exit and Young Miami stepped in, Mary didn't stay on the sidelines. Once again, she was back in the mix, often spotted hanging out with Diddy and Carisha. And then Jaguar Wright joined the chat and publicly blasted Mary for allegedly sabotaging multiple female artists, including Faith Evans. But Jag didn't stop there. She also suggested that during her time at Bad Boy, Mary was allegedly in charge of procuring young artists and bringing them to Diddy. Because as much divisive that you've done behind so many female artists back, the way you f over Faith, because you was jealous. You f***ed over a lot of people, Mary. It's not our fault that Puff picked you up because you had no talent and you fit his plan. Mm. It's not real singer's fault. He found you in a mall at a talent show singing bad. And said, I'm going to make that star and prove to these motherfuckers you don't need talent to run a record label. You were his prototype. That's Did why he, he had you running around the streets looking for every rapper possible to bring back to him. You were a procurer. Now, Faith Evans always kept it classy, and she didn't directly accuse Diddy or Mary of sabotaging her. However, fans were able to read between the lines. One fan said, I love Mary J's music, but Faith can sing her A under the table. Let's be for real, and I don't understand why she doesn't like Faith when it's Diddy's fault. And then another person wrote, Mary J Blige is attached to Diddy at the hip. Both know one another's dirt and secret. During her heavy drug years, he was her main supplier. She is far from innocent. But what's your take on Mary's relationship with Diddy? Do you think they really conspired? against Faith? Drop your comments below and then check out this next video.